Okay, AP Calculus AB related rates problem number 23. And the problem reads pretty, pretty poorly. It says that a sand and gravel plant, sand is falling off a conveyor belt and onto a conical pile at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. The diameter of the base of the cone is approximately three times its altitude. At what rate is the height of the pile changing when the pile is 15 feet high? So I started to set my problem up. I used dreads. So first thing I did was I drew a picture. That's the D part. And this is my conveyor belt. Thank you very much. And this is my conical pile of sand accumulating. The next thing I did was I started looking for rates. And the first rate that they gave me, he gave us was this one. They said that, that sand is being added at 10 cubic feet per minute. They also gave us some information here. I'm not sure if this was a rate or not, but they gave us this information. And it made me think for a second. So I put a, under, underlined that a little bit. Um, the next thing I thought about was what do I know is happening? Well, sand is being added to this pile, and that's adding volume. And I know that the volume, well, I'm not going to use this as a rate, but I know that the volume of a right cone is one-third pi r squared h, isn't it? And that's really important to know because it gives us a starting off point, I think. From there, I just look at this for a second. I'm like, you know, I, I need a rate, but I'm not interested in radius and height. Which am I interested in? And, and, and why? And I keep going back to why did they give me this piece of information? Because it's going to help somehow. Because so I went back and I was like, you know what? It says, what, at what rate is the height of the pile changing? So I'm like, you know what? I don't care about radius. I care about height. But how do I get rid of this? So do I need a, another equation? And I do, and they provide it for us. They say this. They say the base of the cone is three times its altitude. Well, the base is the diameter, isn't it? So half the diameter, of course, is two radiuses. So we can also say that two radius is equal to three times the height. Isn't that right? So again, I'm going to just solve for r because I'm interested in h. So I want r in terms of h. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and get r is equal to 3 halves h. And I hope you can see how helpful that is because this bit right here is going to replace this. So I'm just going to do a little rewriting here. I'm, I'm going to keep in mind, I just want you to know, I am coming back to this. And this is a problem that I have sometimes. I forget to come back and I get to the end. I'm like, well, no, why isn't this working out the way I want it to? So remember to come back to your equation. So here's my one-third pi, not r anymore, because r is 3 halves h. So 3 halves h. And it said clearly that it was squared, so I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to multiply it by h just like they did. I'm going to go ahead and simplify that out. And this is a place where you might want to just stop the video for a second and do the simplification because I'm not going to. Like, I'm not going to go through this. Um, I will remind you kindly that exponents are distributive over multiplication. So this whole thing comes out to be the volume. After I do all my simplification, right, this is going to be 9 fourths h squared. And I have a third out here. So this is going to be 3 fourths pi, uh, this goes to here, so it's h squared times h is h cubed, isn't it? So h cubed. All good, hopefully. So hopefully that's making good sense to you. From there, I think I'm going to try to take a rate, and I, I'm going to take a rate that I already have. I have this rate, and I think that's going to help me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of this. I'm going to take the derivative of volume with respect to time, so dv dt is equal to, I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to use a chain rule, so please stay with me on this because it gets kind of weird. I'm going to do just what you think, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 over 4 is 9 fourths, so there's my 9 fourths pi, h to the third, this gets decremented, so this goes to h squared, doesn't it? But remember, please, 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 because this is where people get thrown off, I have to take the derivative of this inside piece, and the derivative of h with respect to t is, well, frankly, the derivative of h with respect to t. So I'm hoping that makes good sense to you. If it's not perfectly clear, please go back and look at your chain rule because this is all I use. I just use the chain rule here. <coughs> so going back to the beginning, again, if you don't mind, we remember that we're really interested in this change of height here. So I'm going to go back and look at what we have here. We have change in volume over time is changing at this rate, but I want to know that how the height is changing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for dh dt, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reciprocal of this whole thing, 
right? We'll take a reciprocal of this whole thing. And the reciprocal of this is 4 over 9 pi h squared, isn't it? And that would be, and then remember, we have this dv dt here. dv dt here is equal to dh dt. And remember, why I'm doing this is because we are interested in the how height changes over time. This is where I often screw up, is that I have a value here, right? We own a value here, right? And when we started talking about this problem at the very beginning, we were told that, that this value is 10, and I'll show it to you. So here I so I put some dashed lines about, about it so I could hopefully not forget. So I'm going to drop that in here now. I just want you to remember why I did that. So there's that good-looking map. Now the question just comes down to what, did, what were we asked, what were we supposed to be able to do? And we're in really great shape to answer that question because what we were asked to do is say, is say how is the height changing when the height is already 15 feet? So all we would do is we would do this. We'd, our answer would be 4 times 10 over 9 pi times h, right? h is height, and they want to know 15 squared. Isn't that right? Feet per minute. And if you're sitting there going, Charlie, do the rest of the math. Let me tell you why I might not do the rest of the math. If this is not a calculator section, and you do this math on your own, you try to, you try to crunch this thing out on your own, and you put, you put the wrong answer numerically, you're wrong. So right now, this numerically is the right answer. This is a calculus test, not a, not a arithmetic test. But if you, let's say you do this, I think it comes, what does it come out to be? about 8 over 405 pi whatever per minute. If you put 9 instead of 8, now all of a sudden you took a, an answer that you did all this perfect work on and you screwed yourself over by adding a detail that wasn't necessary. So this is my answer. If you want to, you can put it in the form of a sentence. But this is my answer. I like this answer. So I hope this was helpful. I also wanted to take a second to be honest with you guys and tell you that most of the videos I make, I can make them pretty quickly, and they take about as much time as it looks like. Um, if it's a seven-minute video, it probably took about 15 minutes to do the whole thing, including getting it posted up to, to YouTube. 20 minutes, whatever. But this video, I've made this video four times today. And I think that the reason this is happening to me is because I'm supposed to remind you that this is calculus, and this is really difficult sometimes. And little mistakes can get in your way, and I just want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing and encouraging you and t telling you that everything is going to be fine. You're doing great. Don't give up. If there's something I can do, please let me know, and to the best of my ability, to the uh, limit of reasonableness, I'll be glad to do that for you guys, okay? Bye, con Dios.